Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and an art appreciator. I'm also a big fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, I'm going to share a few of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's take a look at today's stories. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so... Don't leave too soon, I'm gonna teach you stuff No, it won't be tough, gonna go a year till you've had enough It's 365 Today, in 1963, the Mona Lisa visited America for the very first time Or at least she was unveiled on loan for the first time Same thing, right? I mean, it's a pretty cool story in itself, but let's just reverse and make sure we get all the facts right on the slightly smiling lady before we tackle her tour of America. Some may say that the Mona Lisa is the most famous painting in the world. In case you, for some reason, don't know what it looks like, I'll give you a little bit of a description. It's a portrait of a woman from the waist up with a backdrop of a far-off landscape. It's oil paint on wood. It's smaller than you'd expect. It's only about 30 by 20 inches. I'm not really doing the painting any justice, though. To say that you have to see it to believe it is cliche, but there's something magical about the Mona Lisa that only comes through when you're looking directly at her. Some of it you can explain through composition. The three-quarters angles, wherein the Mona Lisa is mostly facing towards the viewer but also slightly facing away, was groundbreaking at the time. Nearly all art featured its subjects in a straight-on position. Painter Leonardo da Vinci's new three-quarters pose took the art world by storm and became the new convention for painting. The Mona Lisa's face presents much softer angles than portraits of the time, due mostly to his use of a technique called sfumato that utilizes fine shading techniques not previously seen in fine art. The shading also helped exhibit how well da Vinci understood the skull and the muscles in the face. The details in the Mona Lisa are another part of what makes the painting so iconic. The veil she's wearing is intricate and delicate, and the folds in the fabric are rendered with astonishing depth. The way that the Mona Lisa's hair and body curve echoes the hills in the background. Through these subtle details, the painting achieves a harmony that is rare in artwork, and viewers believe that it reflects da Vinci's understanding of the harmony of people and nature. This makes it an incredible, lasting portrayal of da Vinci's artistic vision. Another fascinating thing about the Mona Lisa is that no one really knows who she is. Art historians have speculated people all over the map. Some of the most popular interpretations are that she was Lisa del Giocondo, the wife of a Florentine merchant, while others speculate that it might be da Vinci's mother, Caterina. Surprise, surprise, Freud is one of the major proponents of that theory. He thought that Mona Lisa's notorious smile was an echo of da Vinci's mother's smile. Sure, Freud. Others thought that the painting was actually a self-portrait because the portrait and da Vinci seemed to have some similar facial features. These scholars theorize that painting himself as something of a riddle to the viewer. But it's all purely speculation. No one's been able to prove the portrait sitter's identity. Da Vinci began painting the Mona Lisa around 1503, and it was found in a studio when he died in 1519. Nobody knows exactly when he was working on it or finished it, but he probably worked on it on and off during those 14 years. When da Vinci died, French King Francis I came into ownership of the painting, and he installed it as a part of the royal collection. The painting was royal property until the French Revolution, when the royal art collections were claimed as property of the people. It hung in Napoleon's bedroom for a little while, but was installed in the Louvre at the beginning of the 19th century, where it still resides today, in its own special room. Except, of course, for its tour in America in the 60s and a couple other countries at various times, but we're going to concentrate on the U.S. for today. In 1962, First Lady Jackie Kennedy requested that the painting be put on view in Washington. The French Minister of Cultural Affairs, André Malraux, agreed, amidst public protest. The French did not want to see their beloved lady spend any time in America. Jackie was fluent in French and very charming, so during her visit to Paris, she charmed French President Charles de Gaulle, even though JFK himself did not get along with the French president. Jackie and Malraux met during this trip and became friends, and he was the guest of honor at a dinner table at the White House when visiting the following year. That's when she persuaded him to loan Mona Lisa to the good old U.S. of A. The painting was set up to go on view at both the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C. and the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Art authorities joined the French in their opposition to the trip. They were afraid of the risk of transporting the most valuable piece of art in the world across the Atlantic Ocean in the middle of winter. 
Jackie remained determined, though, hoping she could improve the average American's relationship to art and also make some sly political moves. She hoped that the visit would bolster U.S. and French relations while helping the image of Americans abroad. Meanwhile, the public reaction in France remained resoundingly negative. Citizens even rioted in the streets. Despite all this drama, the Mona Lisa arrived safe and sound in America, but not without bodyguards and a temperature-controlled vault. She was held in a security vault for three weeks before the exhibit's opening ceremony at the National Gallery on January 8, 1963. The unveiling was a private ceremony that happened to be the same day as the opening of the 88th Congress, so every member of both the House and the Senate were in attendance, plus everyone on the President's cabinet and all nine Supreme Court justices. The party was a loud and lively affair, so much so that the PA system broke down. The president gave an address, in which he said, This painting is the second lady that the people of France have sent to the United States, and though she will not stay with us as long as a Statue of Liberty, our appreciation is equally great. While the Mona Lisa was on view at the National Gallery, it was visited by 518,525 people. Two Marines with rifles guarded the painting at all hours of the day. So many people came to visit the exhibit that critics agreed Jackie's gambit had worked and Americans had a new appreciation for art. Today in 2019, Catfish and the Bottlemen released Longshot. Funky name, right? Well, their sound is certainly funky too. Catfish and Bottlemen is a Welsh indie rock band who have toured all over the world. Longshot was the lead single off their third studio album. And now for our final segment of the day, I'll be going into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a January 8th in my life. January 8th, I'm not sure what I was doing, but I took a photo on January 8th, 2017 of a, I took a photo of listening to Pink Guy, um, who you probably know as Joji, but at the time I was listening to Pink Guy's new album, Um, (laughs) I think I can't remember the name of it, actually. STFU was the song, which I won't say in its entirety because I don't, I don't want to curse, but, um, (laughs) I was listening to, where is this? Where is it? Pink Season was the name of that album. I was obsessed with it. I listened to it all the time while I was in high school (laughs) with my friends. We'd go out to lunch. We'd go to like drive to In-N-Out and we would just play Pink Guy on the car radio. (laughs) And it was so vulgar, but I have good memories of that. Thanks so much for going back in time with me. And remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you can come back tomorrow for more facts from yesterday. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff. No, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365.